this is the single most important project that I've been involved in. I said for three reasons. Really. First is because it's rooted in open education and it's rooted in cooperation and cooperative principle. The second element is that it's rooted in an idea of the public good and what it means to kind of work publicly and together and to try to do things differently. And the final thing really is um, the work that's going to flow back into, into the Montfort University and some of the brilliant stories that we'll see coming up now that we're going to reflect on that and that we're going to take the framework back into the institution. And the fundamental thing here, I think, is that whilst the technology is important, it's rooted in relationships. It's all about relationships. This project set out to be a massive musical journey, really, to span 6,000 miles on two continents. It was a bit of a big thing to start off with, but it actually ended up working really well. It was a really valuable experience for us all. Where it really started was um, teaching some Zulu songs to our year sevens as a whole group, as a whole year, uh, challenging their concepts really of Western music, and surprisingly, they would sing that a lot more easily or happily than actually singing English words. They feel a bit more self-conscious somehow. So we got to know some of the children in South Africa as well. And then we had this big transcontinental uh, concert via Skype. So through a big live Skype link, we sang to them and they sang back to us. <laughs> specifically with staff on developing their digital literacy to then take that into the classroom. Creating wikis for themselves in the classroom, looking at cloud-based services like Google Forms. So there's loads of stuff that we did in there. We definitely introduced them to all the different things that are available that most of them hadn't heard of before, definitely hadn't tried in the classroom. When asked if it improved their digital literacy, every single person said yes. Um, when they asked them if they thought how they could use technology differently, again, 100% of people said they, it changed their perceptions of how to use technology in the classroom. MP6 is a political speaking competition that aims to be a platform for young people to voice their concerns and their issues directly to those in power and to a wider audience. It has been running at Hamilton for a few years now, however this year it's just taken off and it's really transformed the way the competition is being run. We all know, sat here, as many of us are teachers, young people in this city, especially other cities I'm sure, but especially in Leicester, are amazing. They have something to say. They are interested in politics, despite all the misconceptions. Um, they just need the time to do politics, and they need to be given the platform and the opportunities to also practice public speaking. The vast majority of the children are P6 and below, which means that they have 50 words of vocabulary that they understand, let alone able to use. That obviously limits them with their speech and their understanding. Um, communication devices are used completely across school. We're a total communication environment. We were desperate to find an alternative that was cheap, basically. We found a piece of software called um, The Grid. So we went on a course and we learned how to program it and we can now bring it in as an entry-level user. So for a child who we really want them to just ask for their favourite thing, and we have one young lady whose favourite thing on earth is a music box. Um, and we just wanted her, instead of her, at that point, physically hurting people in the classroom to get the music box, we wanted to just press on the iPad to just say music box. Instantly she gets the music box. So we've been able to bespoke for each child so that we can make it completely for them. What are their interests? Is it their friends? Is it a, an object? Is it bubbles? So that we can get them into the iPad and using it as a, basically as an I want need met initially. For our more able ones using the grid, we found a massive improvement in behaviour as well because they're able to construct, not, they're not perfect sentences, but they're able to tell us more, they're able to engage with the curriculum more, um, and we found, again, massive reductions in behaviours um, and, and curriculum progress that it wouldn't look large, perhaps in mainstream, but for us has actually been um, very, very you know, outstanding. Ashfield Academy is a school for children with physical disabilities and we felt iPads could be a really powerful um, way of them communicating but also giving expression to their creativity. And so we came up with the iPad Orchestra and we wanted the children to kind of 
take ownership of uh, the project and create a piece of music that instilled a sense of pride and achievement uh, using a various uh, musical app. A lot of our learners, they have very restrictive movements, very limited mobility, and for some children it's basically moving a finger. We're always trying to think creatively around that. And the iPads have been brilliant because even the smallest movement has a huge impact and a, a, a big sound can be produced. We work with um, a group of 12 key stage 3 pupils um, and uh, it was just awesome. And that was one of the main things. We just wanted it to be awesome. <laughs> we, didn't, uh, we wanted it to be fun and happy and um, in our school it's very much about making the moment count. We have many children with life limiting conditions so we didn't want to kind of experiment. It had to just hit the nail right on the head. It will give you an idea of our learners and if you look at the faces, the sheer sense of joy and pride that they're taking into producing the music. <laughs> Yeah, there we go, that's good. Oh. <laughs>